to have um, a, an amount of people in the in the class. So let's just give everybody a few minutes to join them on the Kickstarter feed. Interactive class where um, I get to lead everyone designing into you know, into animation and prototyping basically. So I'll be giving another five minutes, uh, another four minutes for us to get started. So um, I just want I just don't want people to just join in the middle like that and lose a lot of things. So just let's give uh, everybody four minutes, and by ten ten we we'll get started. Drop a chat to let me know that you guys can hear me. All right, good. All right, um, welcome today. And today we have an interesting topic we are talking about, um, which is animation and prototyping, basically. So I uh, this class is into two different parts. Uh, there is this brief talk about what it is that we are going to go into, and also. Um, a practical aspect where I actually show you guys through how these things are done. So um, it's, I, I hope it's a very interesting class, uh, basically. And um, you also get to ask questions and see me do some stuff live so that you see how I, I personally attack my design when it comes to prototyping and animation, how I do things, how I am able to then develop uh, prototypes to developers, uh, basically, stakeholders. So yeah, uh, let's get started. Um, as usual, my name is Mobile of AKD, and I'm a designer at Outlane and also freelance with Top Talent Brain Trust. I've previously worked at companies here in Nigeria, also which are Carbon, Synfix, and uh, Max. And our uh, outline for today will be basically um, talking about animation and the principles of animation, um, basically. So these are like uh, little level details of what animation is generally. Animation is a very vast uh, topic. So we'll be talking about that also. Then prototyping in UI designs. And I'll also introduce you to the different prototyping tools that are available, but we'll be sticking to one. And then we'll have an hand of hands-on experience using Figma. Then if you have questions, you can always ask, um, basically. So yeah, um, I'll start the class by saying, defining what is animation, is UI animation, basically. So like you can see on my slide, UI animation is the process of adding motion to UI elements in order to enhance a product's interactivity. UX and UI to actually guide them allow users of change, um, influence a user's decision basically, and also indicate the relationship between different elements you have on the on the on the screen, uh, basically. And um, one one great use of UI animation is it allows it reduces uh, mechanical feel of a website or app. So it makes when I when I come to an app, it makes it look so natural and all that. So we say animation is like a very powerful 
two kits when it comes to um, design. And then um, animated effects can also help transport users between navigation now context. Um, it helps, it helps users, it helps designer to explain the changes that is happening on a particular screen. And it's a very essential element of interaction design. So when it comes to digital products, animation is like, is, is, is mostly an afterthought of many product teams, but teams often introduce motion language when work is almost over. You get, it's when mostly you are done with the design, that's when uh, a lot of people actually think about the interaction and um, it's it's not a good it's not a good thing to actually have an outer thought after designs are done that's when you think about animation I think at the beginning of your design you should always think about the kind of interactions we want to use but current practices a lot of people actually take animation as an afterthought when it comes uh, to design so um what are the importance of uh UI animations, uh, basically. So, um, why do why why do I need to have animations in my designs? I've created these designs. Um, do I really need an, uh, animations to actually make them communicate to users? Uh, basically, there are few that I've listed here, and um, one is that animation adds a vital human touch to digital interfaces by simulating experiences of interacting with a physical object in real life. So uh, like uh, everything in this world actually has a motion, a sense of, of moving. And um, we, the way we actually raise our hands is a, is a sense of moving. And the way we walk around is you mo moving, the way our curtains flow when we interact with them, um, basically. So animation actually bring that kind of liveness into your designs, uh, basically. Then it also reduces stress by providing real-time updates and feedback, keeping users informed. It's only through animations that you can actually keep users informed on a particular website. So if I'm on a static page and um, let's say uh, I'm on a landing page and I see a button which says sign in, um, basically when I click on sign in and one, the expected result for someone is, okay, as I click on sign in, it takes me to another page or it shows me a progress that something is actually happening for me to expect. So if there's no interaction between when I click on sign in and the next page, I might be lost. So we use interactions and uh, animations and interactions to actually uh, fill in the gaps there. And another thing is animations also can make an interface fun and engaging. So you might have a very boring, boring uh, flow but when you, uh, let's say uh, you have a wizard for someone to actually complete a task, but uh, it's very boring. Animation can actually uh, help users actually uh, make it fun to do. So let's say I'm trying to create a data flow from uh, you creating a source project to when you, uh, let's say I'm creating a flow of me starting a design process and also ending. But in, in between there are different animations to guide me through the new stage that I'm getting into, they make everything actually fun and engaging. So those are like the basic importance of animation and why you should use animation. So for you to actually start having animations on your board, there are like some principles guiding us, uh, basically. They are guiding us so that uh, we make them right. And uh, just like we have principles of designs, I'm sure you've heard about that principles of designs, um, uh, animations also have principles. And what are the different principles? I'll start by the first one, which is make animation very meaningful. So what does this mean when you mean animation should be meaningful? So um, adding animation to digital products without thought uh, is one mistake a lot of product teams actually make. So animations might look nice, but doesn't, does not necessarily actually add value to user interactions. So don't just animate for the sake of animation. Both functional and delightful animation should be meaningful to users. Animation should always serve um, a purpose. Uh, when an animation doesn't fit a purpose or it doesn't speak to the screen I am on as a user, it might feel awkward or annoying, especially if the animation is actually slowing down anything I'm doing 
it's not making what I'm doing faster. It's not adding any 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 new thing to the screen. You understand? It can be annoying. So the first thing you should understand is any animation you're adding, you should make sure it is meaningful. You understand? The second one is animate as minimum object as possible at one time. So there's this theory that people say less is more. It actually applies a lot to animation. So um, when you are animating objects, make them uh, every motion of the screen attracts attention so much. Animation at the same time. If if you have many things happening on at once on, on a particular screen, everything will be attracting your attention. So you won't know which one you are supposed to look at. If there's something going on up, down, center, middle, you understand it's going to be too much on a user. If you have several elements that you want to animate, you need to clearly define the sequence of the emotion and animate as few objects as possible at one time. So this principle is make it as minimal as possible. Don't uh, let there be like, um, uh, what's the name? Time difference between when each element are actually animating, um, basically. So the third one is you have to select an optimal duration and speed of the animation. And um, in animation, timing is very, very, very key. You understand? Timing is actually one of the most important considerations when designing transitions. You understand? So it plays a huge, huge role in creating unrealistic animations. Uh, when it comes to the duration you are selecting, it's, it dictates how functional the animation is. So you always need to have a balance with, with your time. So um, regardless of what you are designing, uh, basically an animation style transition, transition shouldn't, shouldn't be like uh, too fast or too slow that users actually keep waiting. You understand? When uh, I click on the button, how soon should I see a response? How soon should uh, uh, should uh, my progress tell me uh, something is happening? Uh, basically, I should it should be the timing should be perfect. You understand? The timing should be perfect. So another one is uh, make sure easing of your UX animation is right. You understand? So this also is in in tune with what I said about timing. So making sure that the the uh, entry and exit of your animations is at the right time, at the right sequence. Uh, basically, you should always uh, you should always put that in mind. The, uh, another one is that you should ensure the motion language fits the nature of your product. So, um, the the if you have a design language already, you've created the design system and all that. The motion language that you choose to use should resemble the nature of your product. Uh, let's say. Um, Imagine when you uh, design, let's say you design for healthcare or, um, okay, let's say you design for uh, a banking app and you want to introduce bouncing animation like um, when I click on transfer and it's an animation that just come, an animation that wants to tell me that um, my transfer is in progress, but it's more of like a bouncing animation of um, the say cards and stuff. It's making that scenario actually look playful. Your sending money is a very serious scenario. So it's, it's probably not the best idea when you are using something bouncy to show that uh, your money is on its way. It's more of a serious scenario. So you actually use a, a, you should actually use a language that actually fits that purpose. So uh, the other one is also you should keep long, longevity in mind. Um, even good animation can be very annoying when it's overused. When designing an animation, make sure, ask yourself, we animation, we this animation actually gets, um, get annoying after a user has come into this product, let's say the 10th time, the 1,000th time. So if I keep seeing this animation, it will be annoying or will it delight a user, uh, basically. Those are the things you should always consider when, um, when animating, um, basically. And um, the final part in that I have not talked about in principles of animation is uh, you should always test your animation. So how do you test your animations? Um, basically, is what we are going into now, which is called prototyping. Yeah.
So uh, prototyping is like the best way to actually convey how you intend to use an animation in your design. If you use interactive prototypes, you get a clear picture of how uh, of how the animation works and what works and where the flaws in your in your uh, prototype is and where they are heading. So very often, uh, prototypes actually leads to a complete rework because uh, so uh, very often when you prototype, it doesn't lead to a complete rework. You understand so. Uh, Whenever a prototype gives you the head and uh, gives you the hedge whenever you in a design process, uh, basically. So what basically is prototyping? Prototyping is like an integral part of design process. Hello, is someone talking? So um, prototyping is a, like an integral part of the design process. It allows you to turn a vision into something tangible in order to test your hypothesis with your users. So a prototype can be defined as a draft version of a product. Let's say like MMVP, the very minimum, minimum viable product, and allows you to test your ideas con and concepts very quick and give stakeholders also. Uh, let's say, for example, as I, I'm a designer in the team, uh, basically, and I work closely with my product manager, the first thing, I, the, most of the things I show my product managers are the prototypes that I have. And prototypes are in like different forms. Prototypes can come in from um, from um, low fidelity prototypes to uh, high fidelity prototypes and also to paper sketches. So those are like the different kind of prototypes that we have. And <clears throat> sorry. And there are different benefits of actually uh, prototyping. So what are like the benefits of prototyping? Prototyping actually enables you to explore visual designs. Um, basically, it allows you to explore your designs you are working on in ways that are like impossible to, in, they are impossible to achieve when you just have static wireframes. So we thought you, uh, you've, uh, you've done lessons that teaches you how to actually design wireframes, how to design pages, but prototyping takes it to the next level. Next level meaning you're trying to mimic what it will actually look like when uh, developers are done working on it. Um, prototyping is uh, something that happened some years ago when Tesla came in and said they, they have a cyber truck that they want to release. They had the prototype to actually show on stage for people to see it. They drive through LA to actually show people this particular car that is coming in. The car is just coming in this year, but I think they've uh, done the show since like two, three years ago on, on the particular car. But the, for them to convey that message to people that this is the car we are coming up with, come and buy right now, come and make a pre-order right now. You understand? They had to create a prototype so that the real world. So if I just have mouth that, ah, the website should move like this, this should move like this, uh, the car would be like this. People won't believe until they actually see a fine, a refined prototype. So prototype actually helps you convey and explore your design options, uh, basically. So uh, another benefit is prototyping also can be used effectively, effectively to uncover edge cases and help avoid issues later in the process, uh, saving you a lot of time and uh, and stress, uh, basically. So uh, when when you've done your prototype, you're able to see different edge cases that you might have missed. Yeah, it also allows you to create different scenarios of things. Uh, let's say if I click on this button, there are three different scenarios that's supposed to happen. Is that it feels, is that it's successful? Is that I'm static on the page and my network is bad and it's, it needs to give me feedback on what is actually supposed to happen. So the prototype allows you to explore those options. So you might have like five design pages and you want to interact between these five. How best can you actually do that? Prototype also does that for you. And prototyping is a very key thing in terms of uh, in, in a product team. And when done quickly and frequently, it's like a very time and cost effective way to refine digital product and make sure everyone is involved on the same page. So it makes sure, okay, I'm designing all the stakeholders that are actually working on this product that are into this product. Uh, we get to on the same page easily. So uh, whenever I'm working with a client and I'm done with the designs, I don't just share them 
Figma screens to like, okay, look at this design. I don't share them in my studio as to well, most of the things I share them is a link for them to actually say, okay, let me use uh, this product. And um, I mimic, when, when I'm designing, I try to mimic how best the developer is going to uh, interpret this product. So I try to mimic that. So when my clients or my stakeholders are actually looking at the designs, it's mimicking what I expect them to do uh basically so um and uh when it comes to prototyping also like i mentioned earlier prototyping uh as you can use low fidelity prototypes high fidelity prototypes or paper prototypes but the type and of fidelity you use all the different projects and personal preference you understand but like I said, prototyping is going to be a great asset in design process and always helps improve collaboration, especially, especially between designers, developers, and also stakeholders. Prototyping also is not just for your stakeholders, it's also a very great tool for user testing, I'll, allows you to accelerate uh, sign off to developers. Uh, you understand, it gives you this edge to say, okay, now I'm done. Uh, we can move on to we can move on to development. Prototyping allows us to do that, uh, basically. So and um, there are different tools in in designs that we actually use to prototype. Uh, I'm sure you guys know most of them. Um, we have uh, Adobe XD, we have Figma, we have Principle, we have Frema, we have Invision, we have Just in Mind, we have Balsamic. So depending on the kind of prototype you are doing. There are tools for everyone. You understand. Um, I know principle is um, principle is uh, a very good uh, prototyping tool in terms of it. It's it's very it's very it's very good to the extent that you can do a lot of micro interactions on principle. Uh, Prototype is also an example of that where uh, you can do a lot a lot of micro interaction in 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 design in, in your design. Figma, Adobe XD, Sketch, Just in Mind, they're also great, great, great prototyping tools. They may be limited because uh, they are still, they are not focused only on prototyping, they are focused on prototyping design and everything. They might be limited, but there are still ways you actually can, uh, you actually can get through to um, portray, um, uh, to portray your designs to your stakeholders and to the people you actually want to use uh, the product, uh, basically. So these are like the tools you can use. And uh, I think today we'll be working on Figma to actually prototype some things and also show you how best uh, you can attack uh, prototyping, uh, basically. Uh, and uh, with this, I'll, I'll move us to uh, Figma now so that we can get started um, we have like an hour, an hour minutes to actually do that. So I don't want to waste our time on so much of the theories and just get right into um, designs. But before we go, if you have questions, you can actually ask me the question right now. So if you have questions, you can raise up your hand. I think I'll be able to see you. All right, since there are no questions, um, since there are no questions, let's dive into um, design or prototyping. So for this class, um, I, I've actually downloaded fresh designs that I don't know about. So these are like fresh designs, I don't even know the function but so that you guys will see how I actually, how I actually uh, tackle prototyping. 
and now and now I go about it myself. So um, I have three different files. I think uh, this is the first one. Um, I think this is about food and recipes. Uh, the next one is about uh, music. Yeah, your daily podcast, and the other one is mobile. Um, basically, so I'll be showing you different ways at which you prototype, how you use, how you prototype on Figma, and um, and the best way to go about it. So I think I will start from this. Um, this, when I downloaded it, I actually noticed the person has, has prototyped this. So I'll be showing you what the person has done and how we can also improve that experience and the ways you can actually do the different things. So um, on Figma, there are different layers to where you can do things. So right now we are on the design phase. So like I said, Figma does, uh, allows you to do uh, a lot rather than just design a prototype, it allows you to do that. And for the Figma screen, if, uh, let me see if I can move this file. Yeah, let me just share with everybody. Yeah, so you can join me on this um, on this file if you are with your system. Um, basically, and we can get started. So yeah, um, for you to get started with prototype, one of the first things you need to do is arrange your prototypes the way you want them to interact. So um, if I, if um, if you are done designing and stuff. To make sure you are not you are arranging your screens very close to each other so that uh, you understand the flow of how they work um, basically so i'm going to start by saying um i will show you what this person has done and why this person has done it the way the person has done it so i'll be play, playing this prototype so i think this part of the design is prototyped so um you can see different links linking them to different pages uh basically so i'll just show you uh guys how you know, what this person has done then we can move to our own particular file to see how best we can improve that or even replicate that and also improve that um basically so this is a wellness app um a health wellness app don't mind me if i don't understand the app i'm also just interacting with it for the first time so that you all understand how things are done so yeah this is awareness app, and the person has um, this design done to show you different things. So um, let me count the number of screens the person has. We have four different screens. We have uh, this particular screen. We have this particular screen, which is the schedule page, the home page, the schedule page, and the uh, profile or on community page basically and uh, we have this middle screen this middle screen is still the home page like you can see and uh, there's this and there's also this this here um, basically so it's a schedule of the uh, uh, of your is a continuity of the home page so the person did something instead of you scrolling um he made you do a drag interaction so yeah let's interact with what so what the person wants us to do is actually scroll on this to see more info. So when you scroll, it shows the things that are down. The person used uh, what we call a drag interactions to actually achieve this. And um, if I'm going to this other page, all I need to click is this guy, just like we operate our normal phones. So the person has done it that I was able to click on this guy and he came to this page. And um, I click on this one, it also takes me to this page. So how did this person do it? So we'll try to mimic what this person has done. And uh, I'll use that to take you through everything. So um, the first one is, the first one is moving from this screen to this screen. 
so what the person did is um, um, it's called the drag animation, right? So there are different types of um, animations when it comes to Figma, and uh, let's talk about that uh, basically. So for you to get started with uh, your uh, prototype, one of the first thing is uh, to understand all the um, all the prototype styles that are available on Figma. So um, let's say I want to interact with my screen. What I need to do is select the element I want to use first. So this is the element I want a user to drag on. Uh, all I need to do is click on the plus button that shows whenever uh, you see you see whenever you're on the prototype phase. Once you move to the prototype phase, select any of the elements you want to use. Select any of the elements you want to use and then click on the plus button. Once you click on the plus button, you can then drag to anywhere you want it to go to. So as I click on this plus button, you can see uh, it's telling me I can drag it, drop it here. I can click on this and drag my mouse here, uh, basically. Or I can also just say, um, I can see and when you're in interactions, you can see interactions, you can click on the plus. So when you click on the plus, it shows you the type of um, interactions you want. So what are the different types of interactions that are available? So what should happen when I do, what should happen uh we have on click we have on drag why overing why pressing a key or gamepad we have mouse up, enter mouse leave mouse down mouse up after delay so these are like the different uh interactions when you are using your phone um when when you're on twitter you want to move to the your notification you click on notification right so that's on click when you are scrolling Pass through uh, when you are scrolling on your, on your Twitter feed, that scrolling majorly it's like you are dragging on your screen to actually make that interaction. You understand? That's drag. Uh, when when my mouse when my mouse hovers on this guy, you can see as my mouse moves hovers on the home, there's something that is happening. That's me hovering on something. So those are like uh, the different interactions that you can see, that we have that are like the basic. Also, when you press something, and uh, the kind of interaction that happens, then we have key or gamepad. Key or gamepad is I can select any of the keys on my keyboard, or if you can connect to a particular gamepad, um, an Xbox or uh, PS4, PS5 pad, you can connect your uh, system to it to actually select a particular key. And it's anytime I select my prototype, it actually allows me to do that. You understand? So when I click on Let's say I'm prototyping for a game. I say uh, X is for you to go to the next page. A is for you to go to the next page. This allows you to do that. So for the first one, I want to actually allow a user to drag so that um, one, the animation that happens of uh, moving from uh, this to this happens. So what I need to do is select this component and drag it to this page. So once I drag it to this page, this is the first animation I'm doing. So it's showing something here which shows flow. So you can always rename your flow to say uh, trial or name it anything you want to name it, um, basically. So we are still on the home page and the animation I want I, uh, right now is on click. So what I need to do is, do is um, say on drag. So when I click on drag, you can see it's telling me that it's only until I drag that it actually moves uh, to this. So it tells me uh, on drag, what should happen? Navigate, open overlay, swap overlay, close overlay, back, scroll to open link, uh, basically. These are like what should happen, uh, basically. So I'm choosing navigate to, then I'm choosing the home page, which is this particular one. So this is for you to choose this particular screen is going to, but because I've, I have already dragged it here, it has done that automatically. So we have an, the animation here. So what kind of animation happens? You yeah, understand? So it's asking me what kind of animation should I have? So there are different types of animation. There are instant animation, dissolve animation, the smart animate, and there's a moving animate, move out, push, sliding, slide out. So let's stick with moving and let's see what this has actually given us. So when I click on play, if I drag, you see what is happening? It's moving me in a way I actually don't want. 
So I, I um I have a moving that goes to the side. So when I click when I drag it, uh, let's go back to the flow. So it's until I drag to the left that it's actually functioning. But that's not the kind of animation we actually want. Our animation should be up, uh, down. So what are the things I'm going to do? I'm going to look at my animation properties. So I want it to move when I <clears throat> when I swipe up. So I click on uh, the kind of moving I want, uh, basically. Then I also have the different the different is in and is out. One thing Figma does is it allows you to see the kind of interaction you are selecting. So when I click on this, it shows that uh, A, this is A, uh, this is A, this is B. What happens? B moves into this guy. So uh, it shows the kind of animation that happens. So if it is to the left, you know, to the right, it shows the kind of animation that happens. If it's down, it shows the kind of animation that happens. If it's up, it shows the kind of animation that happens. So let's see the changes that happened when we actually clicked on uh, up. So when I did up, it showed, it showed this kind of animation which is like almost what we want, but it's still not what we want. So you show that kind of animation that, oh, you are swiping up um, basically. So um, it also shows the uh, duration here. So this is the duration you want the animation to do. Like I said, timing is also key in kind, in kind of uh, animation you are using. And uh, we also have smart admits matching layers. So if they have layers that are actually matching, uh, you want Figma to automatically detect them. So we have good afternoon. Good afternoon is also here. We have this guy here. It's also here. We have this here. It's also here. So it, it can actually use AI to actually animate this for you and see that there's an interaction going. So here right now, what I'll do is I'll try to um, I'll try to include smart animate. Let's see what happens again. So another thing, you click on your play button to actually see that what is happening. And when I click on Smart Animate, you can see the interaction is not pure, but there's a sense of the animation coming into play right now. So before we started with something that didn't have an animation at all, but right now we are moving to something that actually has an animation, uh, basically. So um, that's how drag works. And you um, know, also edit it and say, oh, <clears throat> I don't want it to move in. What do I want it to, to do? I can say, okay, smart animate when I drag. You understand? So I'm not using moving. I'm just telling Figma to actually smart animate the designs when I uh, when I when I drag on it. So when I click on smart animate, I can click on play, and when I smart animate, you can see the the flow that actually happened. It's not moving any screen in. It's actually just animating the elements. So it animated this guy and animated this guy. It animated this guy. This guy, it animated them without me actually moving in screens that uh, before. So as I clicked on it, it's animating them one by one. So those are like the tricks you can use when it comes to uh, drag animation. So how do I also transfer from screen to screen? So um, let's say I want to move on this page. I want users to be able to move to this page. How do I do that? All I need to do is, um, click on the elements, like I said, either you add interactions or you click on the plus button that shows when you hover, uh, basically, and then drag to the particular screen. So I'm dragging into the screen. And what is my chance of that? Uh, for you to go to the screen, you have to tap or click on it. So uh, basically I click on, on click, I navigate to that particular page. And then uh, what do I do? Do I want to use Smart Animate? I'm not sure Smart Animate is the best thing because I don't have similar similar um what's the name similar components here. What I can do is okay, let's say I can just uh, dissolve this uh, basically. So when I do that and I click on the play option again, and I click on the play option, all I need to do is click on this. When I click on this, you can see the interaction that happened was that I went to that page with instant effect, but in a dissolved manner. And um, basically, and um, I, um, yeah, so uh, let's do the same thing for when I'm on this page and say, okay, it's going to retain the last animations that I used, um, basically, which is on click to this particular page. Um, another page we have here is um, the community page. So on this, I can select this first one, move it here, retain the last animations I did. 
this particular one uh, move it here, retain the last animations that I used. Um, this particular one move it here, retain the same animation because I want the same animation to have, have to happen abroad uh, across. I can move this one and also move the animation here, and um, I can see. Um, Okay, I think I've put type everything. I can also move this guy. I can move it here. So now we have all our all our screens connected to each other. And when I click on the play button to actually see it again. Okay, I have not done one particular one. I move it here. When I click on the play button and I see and I move them again, you can see I'm on the home page. I can drag to to scroll through the home page, I can click on this to go to the next page, click on this one to go to the next page. So those are like the ways you actually do uh, the basic the basic interactions on, on Figma, which takes you from screen to screen. So what are the basic things you need to learn how to use? You need to learn uh, the different interaction styles from the on click to drag, to while you are hovering, to while pressing while pressing using key parts if you have game parts and stuff and also after delay uh, basically uh, which i will still show uh you guys some things so yeah this is us replicating what this person has done and uh it's like okay yeah this person has done this interaction let's try to inter uh, replicate what this person has done and we're able to do that so um as a designer one thing is for you to learn how to also work smart so um I'll be going into what we call components now so that you can also animate and design with components in mind. So um, if myself, Mobile Iron Alphacad is supposed to work on these designs, and these are just four screens, so they are looking like it's, it's easy to for us to actually animate this to this, this to this, and this to this and stuff. There are ways we could actually make it better where we work using components. So I'll go back to my design screen and drag this guy out and duplicate it. So I'll call it, for me to work and actually um, be able to retain anytime I click on this and copy it to any place, I want to be able to retain the kind of interactions that I want. I can turn this guy to a component for me to work with. So um, for you to get started with the components, you can just click here and create, uh, right click and create component, or you can uh, select uh, the uh action here which is create component so once you create component there are different um there are different pages that this component will lead to um i'm i'm doing this because um uh, i can have like 200 screens that on the home page i want let's say i have um 300 screens. I know this home page, these sessions, this we still look, we still be the one. But when I want to make changes in, like I've gone far in the design, but I want to make a particular change. Let's say I redesigned, I redesigned this home page, and I designed this home page, and I I have a new design for it, and I just want to copy and paste. I don't want to delete what I have already. How am I going to still keep my interactions? So those are what I actually use components for a lot. Um, basically, so one of the things I would do is actually duplicate my component to actually have one to have all the styles we have here. So let me just copy these guys and bring them here. So uh, what I'm trying to do is how you interact with different components. So I've created this component and I said, oh, I need I need to have it animates to different states. What are the different states I have? I have when I'm on the home page states. Oh, there's an, sorry, let me, let me drag this guy. To show, yeah. So there are different, there's when I'm on the home page, there's one on, on the um, video or what, what do you call it? on the sessions page, there's when I'm on the message page and there's when I'm on uh, the, and when I'm on the community page, um, basically. So how do I animate the different states and say, okay, um, you, so using component, I'm not sure if you, you guys have been taught component. I think I saw it in the design file, but I think you guys have been taught component. 
So when you want to create different variants, I think I, I did like a sample in the last class. I can, all I need to do is add new variants for my components. So when I had a new variant, um, basically, oh, all right, that's good. Okay, when I have a new variant, uh, basically, I need to make the changes I need to make here. So I can say, um, this is my going to be my um, home page. So let's say I copy this particular guy. I replace, I replace this guy. So this is no longer my home page. This is now my uh, videos page or sessions page, uh, basically. So this is what I want to do. So I copy this guy. I say on this date, paste to replace. You should be here. So I've created two variants. I have now my own page. This page. Um, the next variant is uh, the. um the message i don't have the icon for the message so i will just do it it's up so i create another variant and say okay plus shows the variant and then um let's replace this on page again this to replace bring this guy here so let's do a quick a quick cheat for this guy. Um, let's just let's just draw something across to block it for now. So uh, yeah, just to match what the design style is, I'm just trying to create something. So, so that's how you did. There are different <laughs> ways, but yeah. So um, for the last one, let's say I duplicate again and say, okay, this should be uh, my messages. So for this one, I can So yeah, I have the four different stages that I have. So um, if I am to then animate, let's let's remove these guys away from the screen. So let's remove these guys. Let's remove these guys. So I have uh, my four screens here, and I have my uh, my bottom nav here also. So let's just do a quick rename. Um, let's see, this is the home page. sessions um, messages and then last one we have 
um, communities. Basically. So yeah. So now I want to animate. What I just need to do is bring my uh, bring my gradient close to it so that I can be able to animate uh, basically, and I click on prototype. So one of the first thing I want to do is uh, whenever uh, uh, this variant occurs on any page, where should they move to when I click on anything? So the first thing is I'll let's animate the sessions. So when I click on sessions, I want you to always move on here. And what is the animation I'm going to use? I use I click on on click navigate. Same thing we used the last time. Whenever a user clicks on, whenever a user clicks on message, uh, we are on community where should you go to click here so i kind of retain when someone clicks on home page it goes here for all my own page i move them here for my own page i move them here for all the videos i move them here yeah no sorry yeah Then for all my communities, it goes here. All my communities, it goes here. Yeah. So now that I've animated my component, my components are now like uh, all admitted. So they know where they are going to whenever I use them. So I can just copy each of my components and just paste them in the in the um in the file navigate them to the bottom page um basically and click this variant this variant is meant to be where uh, sessions command b break it down to this variant uh, oh sorry this is meant to be um community so I can just click on community here and um, click on community and um, this is also home page so it will be on home page um, basically so uh, I'm using my components now and I've been able to animate between three different flows uh, basically for pages and when I click on play um, sorry so um so i create a flow starting point so i've clicked on play so flow two let's click on play and see flow two so if i select any of them it goes to the pages i've actually set them to be so i'm only animating my component here i'm using my component that i've animated i'm using it to so if i create a new page right now instead of me dragging the way i've dragged for each of them all i just need to let's say i created um I created a message page. Come on, let's add this as messages. If I created a message page, all I need to do is um, all I need to do is change this component to uh, my message section. When I keep change it to message section, although I've not admitted for messages at all, so all I need to do is on this page. I know uh, if you're on any of the pages, you go to messages, it goes here. On messages, it goes here. For messages, this one also goes here. Uh, basically, let me just delete this so that we see the difference. Uh, basically, so if I click on play, uh, and I'm on messages, this is a new creator screen. I know I'm I'm still going to be on every on. And every, so if I'm creating new pages and they are supposed to interact here, the component actually help me does the interaction. So that's one way of actually using components and using them to actually animate your designs. Um, the other thing, I'll, I'll be moving to another page now to show you more ways of actually interacting uh, between elements. So yeah, so this is a food website and um, what they've done is i think the person has designed this is the home page this is the recipe details and this is the blog lists 
um, this is the blog post and this is the contact talks page yep um i added something which is contact uh, which is supposed to be video overview So uh, this is a website, and the person has created these designs. But when I click on play, let me see if there is any interaction here. Cooking templates. So when I click on prototype, there's actually no interaction that is happening here. Uh, you can see uh, there's no joining points or anything that is shown here. So uh, let's play this and see. Yeah. So this is what we have. Uh, for the designs, and um, how do we turn this into an interactive design that uh, when you show to a client, the client is able to understand that, oh, when I click here, it's supposed to go here and stuff. It's still the same way we did that, but I'll be showing you my few tricks I use personally when I'm designing this type of uh, website, um, basically. So yeah, uh, one thing I've not shown at all is the, uh, is the overlay feature. I think we had um when you we have on um, we have after delay we have um why opening we have some things that i'm not sure that i will try to show using uh this prototype um basically so yeah first thing is um this website consists of recipe details so where in this page does uh, takes us to this page yeah so uh this is uh, on this page. We have the header, the euro section. We have the categories, and we have an action that says. Oh, let me share this website to you guys. All right, I like and see your message. I'll come back to that. I'll I'll do another variant uh, component variant basically so that you understand uh, where we are going to. So yeah, so this website has uh, the euro section, which has like a few pointers, which is like view recipes, um, and stuff. We have the categories section, which also has an action page. We have like the recipes, which are the different kind of recipes that are available. And um, we also have like an advert here. We also have their yeah, Instagram details. We also have other recipes and stuff here. Yeah. So how do we animate or how do we create interactions using this? So one of the first thing is I'm creating my starting point from here, which is let's say on page starting point. Uh, in templates. Um, basically, so one of the first things I would like to animate is I, from any page I have, I want to be able to click on the logo that takes me back home. So let's say uh, I click here. You know what? So I'm creating a device size for when we actually play. So I'm going to be sticking with the size of the of the design. The design size is 14. The width is 1440. So when I come to prototype, click on show settings, then uh, 
select design style, style you can see the different styles so i'm going to be using custom size by using uh 1400 by 900 basically so whenever we play whenever we play we have our sections divided equally uh basically so uh yeah let's go back to this page So yeah, so one of the first things I will do is um, on every page I am, I want people to be, so on the norms, I will also do the way I did for the mobile. I will actually do my header in variant styles so that they will be easy for me to animate. So I'm not animating, I'm not going to every page to actually select on it, uh, basically. But let's, let's do it the rough way. And uh, let's say I want, anytime I click on the logo, I want people to go back to the home page. So when I when I click on go back to the home page, uh, this comes in. So it says, what kind of interaction do you want to happen? On click. So on click, I want this to actually happen. And it navigates to the home page. So it's basically going to you. I'm going to basically say navigate. Then uh, my animation style instant. Do I want it instant or I want it to dissolve? So I am selecting instant. Uh, basically, and there's something called preserve scroll position. Uh, so, um, I'll, I won't click on it because I want it to always load on the first screen, on the euro screen, uh, basically. But I'll come back to this preserve scroll position uh, later when I do some tricks, uh, basically. So, uh, we have our home page to the home page. I want it to retain that. Recipes, I think we're on the recipe page. So uh, I don't think we are going anywhere from that. Uh, the blog, the blog is here. The contact, I think I saw the contact here. So you can always edit what you want for your animations and all, all that. And um, I think we also have about page. Okay, we don't have an about page. All right. So those are like the pages we have. Blog. Let me link on the home page to blog. Um, this is my blog. And um, contact page. This is my contact page. So if I click on this now, so this is still basically using the example we have. So if I click on this, uh, and I click on blog, it takes me to the blog page, which I can then scroll and say, okay, yeah, that's nice. Uh, basically, if I go to the, if I click on the contact page, it takes me to the contact page. So those are like the basic kind of interactions that you want. But like I said, when things are not moving, you can see I'm on the, I'm on the form and I'm not getting any interaction and stuff. It's not making me feel like I actually can do stuff. So a lot of us just click, click everywhere and not get feedbacks. Okay, so that's where I come back to using um, using components to actually create stuff. So uh, I want a user to, on this page we have the recipes. So I want the user to actually see, select this recipe and move to this page. So let's say this is the recipe and when they click on it, this is what actually shows when a user clicks on it. It takes, it takes them to this page. So how, <coughs> sorry, how does it, interact how do users know that they are supposed to click on this so let's copy this guy and do some few tricks uh, basically so on the norms i can just select if i don't want to do too much i can just select this guy and just say um it's move here you understand when i then play it and i go to this particular place i can just i can just select it and it moves you understand this kind of boring it's kind of boring and yes um let me just show you the understand the meaning of this preserve scroll, scroll position so when i click on play and i'm on this scroll position you understand this is where i am i'm not on the top floor this is where i am and i click on this guy you can see the page is not starting from where from the top it's starting from almost this identical position i was in in the format screen so the scroll position is good for when you are doing some other basic interactions 
But right now, it is not good for this particular one because I want a user to actually start from the top for them to see. So um, I brought this out to show the ways you can actually interact using other interactive uh, method on the app. So we have this called the, let's call it um, uh, recipe group. This is our recipe group. I want something to happen when a user actually hovers on on it, uh, basically. For me, let me just duplicate this that I'll keep somewhere so I don't destroy it too much because I'm about to destroy it. Right? Okay. So, um, One of the first things I'll do is I want this inter and this component to be interactive on this page. I don't want it to just be like that and user clicks. I want there to be like a life coming into it uh, whenever a user clicks on it. So what will I do? Uh, I think one of the first things I do is create create it as a component. Why am I creating it as a component? It is repeated on this page. I have one, two, three, four, five, so different stuff that are using that same component. So I want to just create it once and just change images and name because uh, we have just the name, the minute it takes to you and the kind of food it is, um, basically. And also the image and the love icon, whether you want to like it or not, um, basically. So one of the first thing is I create this as, uh, as a, what's the name? A component. And um, what do I want to happen on this thing? Let's say I want, when a user hovers on it, something shows here. Let's say, uh, let's say, um, let's say like an arrow shows here. What should that be? Let me just grab an arrow from somewhere. Let me grab an arrow from somewhere. Just give me a minute. So I have my arrow here. Let's say when a user hovers, I want an arrow to show that. Just to say, okay, you can learn more here. Let's say that's what I want. And um, basically, so I have, I have my component, and what I need to do is um, create a new variant. Like I said in the other time, if you want to create variant, or you, for you to create the first variant. You come to this side of the panel. Once that, once you've created your element to be a component, you can see that uh, it has variants, and you can click on the plus button to actually add the variant. So when I click on plus, it creates a new variant. So this new variant, what are the things I'm changing there that I want to show only when I over? So I can say um, for this one. I can reduce the opacity for this guy to be um, to be zero. So I don't want to see it on this particular variant to be zero. And um, on this one, let's change something here. So let's say my fuel, I don't want it to be linear. I want it to be solid. So it shows uh, this way. And it also shows an icon. So this, uh, the difference between this guy is that this um, the few here is a linear one, so you are not seeing the whole box, and yet it's, it's more pronounced, and it also has an icon. Just to tell you that to uh, to what's the name to to go into the uh, that uh, you can click on it and it will move, uh, basically. And what else do I want to do? So I have my two interactions. When you run it, it shows this. So what else, uh, how do I then uh, prototype it? So when I click on this, I can just click on prototype and click on um, the first one. I move this particular arrow and then move it to the next component. So what kind of interaction do I want to have on this component? So I come to here and I say, okay, why are Uber? I want you to change to this second variant. So what kind of uh, 
animations do I want there? I can say, okay, I want this smart animation to move. So when I click on smart animate, what kind of ease in, ease out do I want? I want it to ease in and out. So you can see the animation of ease in and out. Okay, within how many microseconds? 300 microseconds. So yeah, I've created that. So now let's, let me control C and then paste to replace. Okay, one thing I can add is, okay, when I'm on this page, I want you to move to this page. So when you have to move to this page, which kind of animation? Instance, on click navigation, instance. So I'm just keeping it very simple. So now let's play. Okay, let, let me still put this guy, this other one here to show you the basic animation. Okay, now let's play what we have. So right now, I'm sorry, don't think. Change to this guy and this guy moves to this guy. Sorry, something is happening with the prototype. Um, just give me a minute to understand what is going wrong. Okay. Let me try something else. Sorry, I'm trying to understand why this is not working. Let's use the mouse and train. Sorry, I'm really not sure what is going on. Why my effects designs are not working? Uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to pick up some things. Yeah, no. So why is it not working? Sorry, I think I have a bug, but I can't, I don't know where that is coming from. So why is it not working? OK, 
Okay, I think I'll come back to that. I'm not sure why it is not working. I'll just try to come back to that, but I don't want to delay us. But basically, if you want to do any Uber interactions using your states, this is how the process you use that. So uh, the idea of what I was trying to do was anytime I, fuck, anytime I, um, I'll come up with that. I'm not sure why it's working. So, um, so basically, anytime you want uh, an, a component to interact, this is where you actually do that. Uh, maybe, like, let's say on Uber, I want you to be able to click, just like I showed on the other one. On Uber, I want you to be able to move to this particular. Um, so you can, I want to be able to be like, okay, as I'm, as I Uber on this, I want you to show this. Um, basically, uh, and these are the kind of ways you actually do those interactions. So on this, and um, there are different, there are different, um, what's the name, components that has changed on this particular section. So it's more of uh, the, I, I added an arrow and I also made the border complete. So the expectation was uh, whenever I, whenever I, um, Whenever I move on it, I want this to actually show. <clears throat> yeah, whenever I move on it, I want this to actually show. So it gives me like a source of animation where it actually shows. I I was able to do this with the buttons I showed the last class. I'm not sure why it's doing like this here, yeah, right now, um, basically. So yeah, that's how you are able to do that kind of in animation. I'll try to go back to understand what's actually wrong. That hopefully I'm able to do that after this class. So the other one I would like to show right now is, um, uh, let's come to this page, uh, is the overlay effect. How do you overlay things? This is a website, you know, a lot of times when you are trying to play videos like this, there are two scenarios that happens. Is it that this video actually plays here or it opens another page or it actually overlays on, um, on the design. So one of the ways to do that is when you click on your prototype, Tab, I can you can select any of the elements here. Let's say I'm selecting just the plus button. I'll drag it to where I have my video. So when where I have my video, I have uh, it's just like another frame just to show the video. And um, the kind of uh, interaction I will use here is on click. I want you to open an overlay. So this is the overlay. As you can see, when I selected an overlay, it showed. That is an overlay, so the interaction actually changed. So on this overlay, uh, what uh, what should happen? Uh, basically, uh, how should it stay? So I want it to be centered on the page. And uh, basically, uh, I can say it should be centered to the left or centered to the bottom. So that, but I'm selecting uh, it should be centered. Uh, basically, so once it's centered. Um, what are the interactions I want to happen? So there's something called close when um, clicking outside. So I can click on outside of the of the file. What should happen when I do that? It will close the overlay, and I can also add the background behind it. So these are like what you want to have in your overlay. So when I click on my overlay, I come back to my design and I actually remove the white. Uh, let me remove the white design that is there. So this is my overlay. I want you to come here. So when I go back to play, and I click on play, this is what happens there. It comes as an overlay. It's blurring out or giving a dark notion to the one that was below it. But I'm still on uh, the page. So when I click outside, you can see I'm still back to the page. That is, I didn't, I didn't leave the page. I'm still on the page, but I. I called in another action into the page. So these are over. That's how you actually work on overlay. It's it is used to.
to do, uh, let's say, um, uh, multiple models. So anytime you are creating models, you use the overlay option to actually uh, create models. So, and you can also, like I did first, I removed the fill. If it's on fill, let me show you how it actually looks like when the fill was on. So when the fill was on, you can see it was uh, uh, removing everything I had there. I can also uh, blow out my fill and say, okay, uh, for my fill, let me add an effect of um, background blur. So it blows everything that's on the background, uh, basically. So let's my fuel. Let me reduce my fuel by fifty percent. Okay. So when I click, you can see uh, because I have a fuel, everything is is uh, basically below. But when I uh, then remove my fuel, I say uh, I say well, all I just need is this. So when I click on play again can see that it's showing so I can also increase let's say I don't like how dark uh, uh, the darkness of the background I can come back to my prototype mode select select increase the uh, increase the opacity level let's say 55 percent and I click on play again you can see it gets darker so most of the models are popping up uh, basically so for this kind of website uh, the things that happen is either you are able to click on play and it plays here or it actually opens a model um, for you to uh, for you to see your designs uh, basically so one last thing i would like to touch is um so these are like the different kind of uh, animations that you can actually do on figma and um, using components you can use you can do a lot of things from doing text input to doing um, to doing um, different scenario, uh, to doing uh, what's the name? To doing uh, moving on overing effects and uh, playing of different videos, you can do it here. So um, I want to do one last thing that I personally do. So most of, uh, like you can see on this website, when I scroll up, I've lost, I have lost uh, something. I have lost my header. Uh, basically, and I actually want to keep my header every time. Every time I scroll, I want to be able to see the header so that um, I can navigate easily. How am I able to do that? Uh, basically, so one of the first things I do is um, I use either frames or groups. I select my model. One of the first things I do is I select my model and I say, um, so so this is my header, and this guy here and i have i draw like a shape to i drop like a shape i draw like a shape to form my header so let's most times you have to, you have to use frame for this sorry and you have to use frame for this so i send it to the bar change the color to white which is this then i select the component of my model which is this guy this guy and this guy then i group them to i group them so once i group them all i need to do is um add the constraint so the constraint i add is to fix to fix this guy when i'm scrolling so when i feel when i click on play i'm able to fix this guy uh when it is scrolling uh when i'm scrolling um basically so there are different ways <clears throat> there are different ways you can achieve this. So this is one of the ways you can actually achieve this. There's a trick I use, especially when I'm designing, um, when I'm designing something like this. There's a trick I use to do my model because most times I might want to keep my my header.
So let's say I want to prototype this guy also and say, okay, I want my header to be sticky anytime I'm moving. One of the first things I'll do is I'll, I'll draw this guy above, move this guy above it, select this guy, then give it the color. One, that's one of the things I'll do, then I select both of them and then uh, group them. So for this one, Sorry, the person that did this and I used a lot of frames. Oh shit. Yeah, a lot of edits I need to make to this now. Let me just drop something from here. And then, sorry, just give me a minute. Um, don't mind this design, I'm just trying to use it to explain something. Um, yeah, so I have this as as a page, but I want to also animate and make sure uh, whenever I'm scrolling, this is also fixed so that um, whenever whenever I'm browsing, I, I'm able to see it uh, basically. So um, yeah, when you scroll it stays, but it's not aligned well. So I bring it top. yeah okay yeah sorry about that yeah so uh for this kind of scenario i want to be able to like also have this in the sense that once i scroll it stays but sometimes we want to change the color of the of the 
sticky header. How do you do that? There's a trick I use. Um, let me try to do that. So one of the things I do is I kind of duplicate. I duplicate this guy. So um, once I duplicate it, I have to. So this one, I can then change this one to white. So I'll change this one to white, but this one is hidden under it, uh, basically. So um, I kind of play with with the with the page itself. Most of these things I do them after I'm done with designs. I kind of play with change itself because I'm trying to most time I'm trying to like give a developer when I'm or give anybody when I'm uh, designing the feel I want to have whenever they developed it. So let's say this one I just change it to right. It goes on that too. So it goes under uh, this guy goes here. So then this one goes on So I kind of like have things arranged. Uh, basically, it's kind of it's kind of very uh, complicated sometimes when I'm doing that. I kind of have things arranged so that this one stays, but it only starts showing after after everything on the first page has gone. So sorry. So this one is gone. Uh, I think I'll just come back to this. It's kind of very, very complicated. But for you to create sticky bars is for you to just make sure you have them grouped and you can fix the positions for them to stay. And if you want to change the color, you can also change the color easily. But it's more advanced. It's, I have to sit down and start to think of the way I actually lay out. So it depends. I'm not familiar with the layout, the layer yet. So it depends on the way I actually do the layout that I'm able to do uh, scenarios where um, where once I scroll to a particular stage, it actually shows a new header, uh, uh, basically. I think that's for when you are practicing and uh, maybe I can actually create a video on that uh, later on. So another one I would like to talk about is scrolling, scrolling prototype. So this one we have like, uh, we have something going out of the screen. We have something going out of the screen, but how do you make prototypes that actually allows you to scroll around this? So I'm guessing this person would have used a frame to create this. Um, basically. So I'm framing the selection and I'll kind of like flip the content. Let's, let me try to move it from here. So it starts from here, uh, basically. Flip content, and then I move here. On this frame, I can then select uh, prototype I want if I uh, if I scrolling to actually happen. Yeah, and horizontal scrolling. So one of the things I just did was I turned this into a frame. It was not a frame before. Let me just go back. So it was not a frame before. So one of the first thing I did was convert it to a frame. So if you want to convert to a frame click on this and convert to a frame, then um, I clip the component, the content, because I want it to be uh, uh, on the screen. So where do I want it to start from? Let's say I actually want it to start. So I can leave it like this and then play. Then you can see it's not moving when I, I am trying to scroll now, but it's not moving because it's not clip. It's not, it, uh, it's at like the last stage. So if I can, if I hold my command and drag this frame, to where I want it to start from. And I also drag this guy to where I want it to end. And I come here. Oh, oh sorry. I also need to allow, uh, come to the prototype and select the scrolling type I want. 
So when I click on horizontal scrolling, and I click on play, it then scrolls from where I want it to start to where I want it to end. So one of the things you can do is, um, I can say for this one, I don't want you to end where you're ending. It's not looking nice. I can bring it here. So you should end here. Um, so basically, as I'm scrolling, you're able to see all the uh, pages here. So those are like other types of prototype that you'll be using on a regular basis. Uh, basically, the scrolling prototype and stuff. So if you have any question as of now, I know there are still time. There's the, there are still a number of things, but uh, I've kind of picked some of the ones I use on the rec, um, basically. And if you have any questions, please, you can ask right now. Or should I ask, do, does any of you not understand everything I've said so far? So that I can use the last minutes we have to actually just refresh some things. Okay, since there are no questions coming up, uh, I think what I'll do is, yes, it's the same process. It's the same process, uh, like I said, um, for this scrolling, uh, for this particular one, it does automatically because I've done, I've, I have already um, set my preview. So one of the ways you do that is by setting your preview, the way you want to preview, that's how you are able to score here. So it's almost the same process. So if you have um, if you have like a design that is in page and it does an element like this, that you want others to be sticking and only this particular section and it's in a horizontal mode, you can also do the same uh, method uh, basically to actually do that. So just create your frame, the size you want and make sure the moving elements are available there then animate uh, just set these components to scroll up or down and basically you're able to do that so one of the things i'll do is i'll try to send links to um to where i got this particular design that i use in this class So that on your hand, <coughs> on your hand, you actually prototype every single page and every element that you wish to prototype with um, the reflective water. Um, So uh, this is the name of the. There's no way to share on this. Though. So I'm dropping the link for every one of you, so that you guys use this particular link to practice, and um, you guys should download it. Try to prototype from every page the way you actually want it. I've done some of them. 
today. Try to prototype from for every page you want. And um, you can, once you're done prototyping, all you just need to do is, um, when you're done prototyping, all you just need to do is share me, share this prototype. So you can just click on any of this one, and click on share prototype. Once you click on share prototype, send it to me on, on Slack and I'll try to play with it. And if you have questions, also drop the questions there. And um, yeah, the other one is uh, screen, screen men, mental health. So I've dropped the two links. Um, basically, you can go there, try to search for it, duplicate it. All you just need to, when you come here, just click on duplicate it, turns it to your own personal file. Then when you're there, try to like animate, choose your animation method, how you actually want to do the animation. Choose it, try to animate. If you are going to be creating your uh, component for them, do that. And um, for this one also, um sorry this one is it's kind of um so for these images i think the person will get it from a splash i didn't do this design this like i just shared with the screen of the person that did it so you see the person's information but yeah i get my images from um on splash or if i'm working on someone's project majorly i try to use paid images so i use shutter stock or free peak to get premium images so you can get your images from unsplash free peak uh, pixels uh, pixels um what other ones are available um, so yeah like i said just try to um to prototype these guys give them the, your flow you can always tweak like i said you can always the kind of animation you want uh, basically you try to understand and uh, once you are done you can actually share, share me the link for me to actually see through i'll be checking if you guys sent today or tomorrow i'm always checking majorly at night or um by weekends most times so i'll i'll take my time to actually look at each person's prototype to see whether you're able to get it done Okay, I said when I'm working on someone's project, most of the things I try to use are premium so that um, I like paid post so that there won't be any license issue. So I use shorter stock for that, or I use uh, um, free peak. I try to download premium ones that I've paid for, or I use any of the any of the stock, any of the stock uh, websites to actually download uh images of to purchase images um basically so yeah so um go to these two links try to download this template we used today um try to recreate your prototype and try to see how it flows along and uh, you can all share me your link i will try to i'll try my best to review it i think some people also, also send me their portfolio over during the week i will take today to actually review some of them and then uh Revert um, basically. So if you are here and you are one of those that sent me your portfolio, I'm going to be checking them today. I was very busy during the week, so yeah. So if there are no questions, if there are no questions, um, that will be the end of the class for today. And um, I hope you guys were able to get a, one or two from today's class and. It was quite meaningful to you guys. All right, guys. Um, that's it for today. Uh, uh, thank you so very much. I think I'm not sure. I think this is my last class for this for the court and. Uh, I'd like to see all of you in, in the feud. 
uh, killing it in design uh, soon. So uh, I'll drop my last advice. My last advice is for you to get to do stuff in design. Take your time to practice. Uh, practice every single day. Um, pick up your system. Look at someone's design. Copy the person's design. Try to understand what the person has done. Um, also, just practice every day. I will always give that advice. Practice every day. Uh, there's no single day that passes that I personally I don't I don't touch design. Like there's no single day. Only if I'm out of town, or if if I if I have something in mind, I try to just put it on the table to to make sure you practice. When you get to the field, be confident of what you can do, and then. And then all the best. Someone asked on my social media, you can reach out to me using any of these links. Um, my LinkedIn, my Instagram, and Twitter. I'm very positively active on these platforms. But yeah, if you send messages, I'll try to re I'll try to return them. So thank you and have a and have a great weekend. Bye guys.